Okay, so now we're recording. Okay. I'm gonna do my little intro. Hey folks, my name is Jessica Mashkovich and this is One Take with Jess. My guest today is a businessman. A, wait, I'm gonna start over again because I, I, I was one take. It down. Aren't you one take? Well, one take could mean many things. It could mean okay. one take physically or it could mean one take as in my yep. take. <laughs> Got it, okay. Okay. Hey folks, my name is Jessica Mashkovich and I am the host of One Take with Jess. My guest today is a businessman, a humanitarian, a celebrity, and a prince. He is Lorenzo Borghese. Hey, Lorenzo. Hey, Jessica. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, no problem at all. So I wanted to chat with you today because um, you're very involved. I met you through Animal Rescue, through Animal Aid USA. And it just so happens that October is National Adopt a Dog Month. And I know how passionate you are about animals, as am I. See that one in the back? There's yeah, another one down here. See what I've got here. Come here. You see Tina Turner? Ah, let me introduce Tina Turner. <laughs> oh, Tina. Oh. Awesome. Let me interview Tina for a while. Hey, yeah, Tina. What we'll question do you have for her? Let's see, Tina, what did you think about the fly on the debate last night? I think the fly won. That's what she thinks about it. <laughs> yeah, the fly definitely won last night. That was crazy. I, I had to like pause and like, did a fly just land on his head? And that up. was, that was pretty it, funny. That was pretty. Leave. Leave what? That fly. I know, it stayed for so long. I know. <laughs> All right, so that was Tina Turner. That was Tina Turner, adorable. Um, yeah, so your involvement in Animal Aid USA uh, has been tremendous. The organization has saved over 30,000 animals, right, to 32, date? 32,000. How many? 32. 32,000, that's, that's absolutely phenomenal. And um, you also have a beer company. Right behind you is South Beach Brewing. And I know that that wasn't maybe the optimal time to start a- Oh yeah. Huh? That's the logo. That's the logo. The logo's right behind me. Cool. So tell me, how has the pandemic been for your beer company? It's been awful for it. Um, we were down about 90% in sales. Main reason is because we're primarily what's considered um, on-premise accounts, which are hotels, restaurants, etc. We weren't really in a lot of stores. So when all the restaurants and hotels closed, our, our business essentially shut down. Um, but fortunately, things are starting to rebound now and, um, you know, could be a lot worse. I know a lot of breweries have, have closed for good. And they were estimated at 1.50% we're going to close if the lockdowns continued. And I was just on a, on a call earlier today and I heard that like two more were closing. So mm. uh, it's been a tough time for, for a lot of people, not just in the beer industry, but in, you know, anybody with a retail shop, anybody that has a physical brick and mortar location, it's been, it's been awful. And, and we know what's going on with the airlines and the hotels, et cetera. So it could have been worse. Um, yeah. and I see sort of a light at the end of this tunnel and hopefully sooner rather than later, hopefully there's a vaccine soon that, that people take and there's a cure, um, and, uh, hopefully some normalcy again. Yeah. And Florida has been open for a while now. They have in, uh, in restaurant dining at this point. Yeah. Like in, in Palm beach County, it's basically, you know, a hundred percent bars are open, um, clubs are open until 4 a.m. When you yeah. go to Miami, Miami Dade in, in our area, it's still at fifty percent capacity. Really, um, really. Eleven p.m. curfew, but north, you know, like the, the Palm Beach areas are are totally open. So, do you guys just take a pause in terms of your business and you know have stuff sit on the shelf? It's not a perishable per se. It's probably bottled and stable, and then you, when things ramp back up again, you'll be you'll be active again. Is that? No, well, what, you know, in March, that you March had well, March is traditionally, you know, a really good month for us. And when, when COVID hit, we had a lot of beer brewing and we had to get rid of those beers. And then mm. fortunately, our distributors understood that you know, we're a small uh, beer brand and they got rid of the inventory that they had. They actually, ate it, you know, took, took a hit for it. Um, but now we just are brewing smaller batches and we're not keeping anything where everything's out the door so right. it's still, okay. it's still fresh beer it's just not as much as we were doing uh in in, in february which is 
Did you ramp up your direct to consumer sales? Is that something that's permitted with alcohol? How far can you reach with that? We did not. We we ramped up our our store distribution. We we, we started focusing on the chain stores like Total Wine and ABC. We wanted to get in there, and they've been they've been very helpful to us because they knew that the local craft beers here in Florida needed help. And so you know, I just reached out to them, and they decided to. Yeah. Out because we come, come a little closer to the microphone because you're. Yeah. Quite, you yeah. Go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Much so. So um, yeah, fortunately, a lot of the stores helped us, and uh, you know, again, I, I think within the next four months, I think I'm hoping everything's going to start looking more like normal again, and, and we're all going to recover. Yeah. Well, I think recovery is is definitely inevitable. It's just how how quickly, how soon. Um, I, I know you've been kind of vocal on uh, Facebook, just trying to bring people together, which I completely applaud and agree with and admire. And, you know, I, I hope this country finds its way to not be as divided as it is. And again, that's going to take time <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, Facebook can be, uh, can be a real nuisance to, to, to anyone. And, and um, it's come to sort of a platform of hate in, in some instances, because people can hide behind their computers and have a much different conversation face to face with somebody than, than you know, someone who doesn't know you and starts typing things because yeah. they have different political views than you. I find it insane that it's come to this. And no matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, like I've never, you know, I've never been upset of, of any president winning. I've always supported whoever the president of the United States is, and whoever gets elected, I'll support. And I'm not going to hate somebody for having a different opinion of me. I'm not going to boycott them. I'm not going to call them names. I'm not going to call them racist. I'm not going to call them all sorts of things that I've been called just because I have an opinion and, and I am trying to, you know, and I ask people why they have a different opinion. And sometimes you don't get an answer. You just, you just get an insult. And I don't, I don't feel it's right. And, and, and it bothers me. And I think that's why a lot of people are silent because they don't, they don't want the hate. Yeah, hate is never absolutely. needed. Absolutely. I totally agree. The cancel culture is extremely harsh. And if you fall victim to it, I, you know, sometimes there's no coming back and you can't even have the flexibility of changing your mind. You know, no, you know and we, you learn all, and grow. well, I'll, I'll tell you something. We've all lost friends because of it, but it's never really been me that has hated the other person. They just hate me because how dare I have an opinion that's right. different than, than theirs. And they're all about understanding and, and equality, et cetera, until they don't understand your opinion. Yeah. And then they want to destroy you and call you all sorts of names and make up stories about you. It's, it's, it's just awful. And, and I've seen it happen to both sides too, you know, and, and I, it, it's never been like this. And I blame, I blame it primarily on, on the media because they are creating these fights. They are telling the, you know, their viewers that the other side is bad, that the other side is evil. And, yeah, I've never seen so much yellow journalism. Since. No, and, I mean, and, and but people have to be smarter than that. They they have to say, you know, why am I listening to this media call call the other side of the political spectrum these types of names? Why why are they hating on them so much? And that's what I've always wondered. And that's why when someone does doesn't agree with me, I'm like, okay, I know exactly what they're watching, and I and I know why they feel that way. Right. A lot of people are interested in an actual conversation to hear the other side, but there's a lot of people that don't want to hear the other side. They've already made up their mind and they, they've already labeled you something and, and, and it's, it's terrible and it's coming from what's going on in the news because they want to create this divide and it's sick. Right. Yeah. I, it's, um, I don't know how we get past that actually. I definitely don't know. There, there are so many um, social and political and, you know, layered on top of each other, so many issues that are layered on top of each other with, with no room for understanding anyone's perspective or nuance, whether it's, you know, in our social culture with, um, you know, sex or like, are you a woman? Do you identify as this? Do you identify with that? So that's one issue. Then there's the, the police issue. Then there's the equality issue. And um, there's so many things that are, I've never seen anything layered upon each other in so many, so fast. Yeah, it's, it's true. And what's really interesting is I think that we're a lot more agreeable than we know, but 
we just jump to these conclusions which aren't true. Um, I think that we all agree that black lives matter that, and then every life matters, but we don't agree that there should be these riots and protests and, and people losing their business because of some really bad police officers. You know, I, I think that, that we all agree that there, need, there needs to be change in the police force, you know, maybe, but I think we still all, like the majority believes that the police are good and, they, and they're, they're there to protect us. And there are some bad apples, but it doesn't mean that the entire police force is, is horrible. We should get rid of them. Um, yeah, I, I, but I think we do have some glaring issues, you know, in sure. our police force. And, you know, there's, there's some definitely some good solutions that I've heard have been talked about. And uh, true confession, it was on the Joe Rogan podcast, you know, where these solutions kind of come out. But, you know, there, there needs to be additional training. There needs to be additional screening. You know, we, we do need to up the game when it comes to someone wearing the badge. Um, yeah, no, of, of course. And I, and I think, you know, one of the greatest things now is, is the cameras, you know, so you can see what's happening. Sure. Um, sure. And, and you can, you know, if the policeman's doing something wrong and, it's, and, and they see his videos, they should go to jail. They, they should have their job taken away, just like anyone who does something bad at work. Anybody who's, who's not doing their work probably, sh sh probably should be fired. Doesn't mean the entire company is bad. Right, right. And, and you're dealing with the brotherhood. You know, it, there's a brotherhood. There's a, you know, a, a, a bubble, a protection bubble. But, you know, yeah, so there's definitely fundamental. And even with wearing a camera, you having your time, you know, in front of the camera as a celebrity, you know that you kind of like become invisible or the camera becomes invisible to you at a certain point sure, and yes. carry on and behave as you normally would. Right, and, and you know, I, I also speak to a lot of police officers because I, I do go to the Back to Blue rallies and, and, and I do support them. And they're horrified with some of the actions of their own police officers. You know, yeah. the whole George Floyd thing, they were horrified by that. They said, that's, that's not how we're trained. This guy did something really bad. He should go to jail. He will be good. He will be prosecuted. But it doesn't mean that you go and light an entire city on fire and, and you know, create chaos. I think you have a conversation and you have these laws changed, but, you know, we're a lot stronger, united, and we, and we all want the same thing. I think we, we all want peace. We all want the ability to succeed. Uh, we all want to know that if we start our own business, that, it, that it's not going to be burnt down. And, and if it is burnt down, that, that the government's going to come and help us and, and protect us. So yeah, I think of we, we, all of want, we all want the same thing. And, you know, we all believe racism is horrible and it, and it shouldn't exist. Um, you know, and I don't really, I, I honestly don't really see color. Like, I, I get called racist for having an opinion. Like, I don't have any racist opinion. I don't think that anybody should, should be killed by, by the police if they're of innocent. Course, I, of course, of you course. Know? You and I are, we've never walked in, you know, in another person's shoes when it comes to race. And um, I, so I don't know if you and I can actually, you know, speak of it from the first person for how, you know, we may not be racist, but being uh, judged for your race is not something that you and I have necessarily experienced on that end. You know, even, even before you speak, I, you're judged. Yeah, no. you're judged. I, I, I understand all that. I understand that you, you can't walk in somebody else's shoes without, you know, I, I, I can't be a black person without walking in a black person's shoes. However, I do have conversations with a lot of black people and I'm telling you, a lot of them aren't excited about these, the, the rioting going on. And it's not, and it's not primarily black people, it's white people rioting, okay? Mm -hmm. so it, it's, I just find rioting is wrong. Um, I think that, you know, when police are going after a black person because of their color, that's wrong. Absolutely. Um, but, but it doesn't mean I can't have an opinion. Right. Like, you know, I can't say, I don't know what it's like to, to be a girl because I'm not a girl, but I can have an opinion of, you know, if, if, if a girl is being harassed, that she's being harassed because of her sex, I can't have an opinion on it. Right. But it doesn't mean I understand what it's like being in her shoes. But, you know, we, we're, we're human. We all have opinions and we can try to understand what it's like to be in somebody else's shoes, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I've had my own run in with the police. I remember I was in boarding school and um, I was not allowed to be leaving campus. And I was, and I was, I was in my car and I was with, with some friends. And at that time I had this old four door Cadillac, 
with New Jersey license plates. I was in Connecticut. And all of a sudden, police came out, pulled me over, and they searched my car. They did a search check test on me and everybody in the car. We were there for half an hour. And I said, why did you pull me over? And he said, well, I saw your car. And I saw a New Jersey license plate. And we've had a lot of issues with people coming in from out of state starting fights here. I'm like, all right, so I got pulled over because of my New Jersey license plate and the, the type of car I have. And he said, yeah. And so we've all, like, I understand it's, it's different, but I, I can imagine what it is like to be, a, you know, right. pulled over for the color of your skin. It's awful and it shouldn't happen. Right, right. But let's, you know, let's talk about it, but let's not go and kill police officers, innocent police officers, because of what's happening right now. Yeah. I think it's wrong. It is wrong. It is wrong. And it's certainly getting attention. So, you know, for many years, this has been something that has required attention. And now the attention is on it, you know, 100%. There's, there's a, a absolute focus on what's going on. Yeah. Well, they, you know, and, and some people say, do you think there'd be this much focus if, if it didn't come to this? I'm like, yeah, that, that George Floyd video was pretty disturbing. And it really hit home on a lot of people. And I think there would still be this much focus. Maybe even more if it was more of a peaceful thing going on, because I think they'd get a lot more support for it. And because no one wants to see racism. Yeah. They, they don't. And I don't want to see any store burning down. I don't want to see any policeman shop just because they're wearing a uniform. It really hurts the cause. And it turns a lot of people off when that happens. And I think we were a lot more united when, when everyone saw the George Floyd tape and we were horrified by it. Horrified, absolutely horrified. horrified. I'm actually surprised how there aren't more conversations with what the, what the plan is to revamp the police force. True. I, I, more conversations, you know, I, more things that are being talked about on talk shows, more things that are being talked about in government, bills that are on the floor for funding to, to see train it. police I, officers I, I like Navy SEALs. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm surprised that that hasn't triggered, all of these activities haven't triggered more legislation to be passed on enforcing a certain code of conduct, you know, as, as well as train, training regimen for yeah. police well, officers. Well, 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 that definitely has to be done. I know, you know, in, in, in certain areas of the country, they're redoing their own, you know, rules in the police force. But yeah, I think something on a national level should, should happen. Yeah, and I, and I don't know if, if each state should be deciding, you know, their own policies. There's a lot of states that are extremely uh, prejudiced and racist in, in things that they've uncovered in, in various states. And it shouldn't be a state by state, you know, by their dis discretion as to how they police their community or how they protect yeah, I how they protect their community. Actually, that's really the, the phrasing. It's not necessarily policing people, but it's really protecting people. Yeah, I, I, w I would love to see it. And I think something like that definitely needs, needs to, you know, happen and needs to be shown to the American public what is actually happening, because we, we don't know. Um, yeah. we, we all know that, you know, hey, we're, we're gonna make some changes, but where are those changes? I haven't seen them, I'm not right. aware of them. Um, I think, the one good thing again about cameras is that I think police officers now are more, you know, worried about, hey, this is all being filmed. I'm, I'm going to be a lot more careful when I stop somebody. I'm going to be a lot, a lot more careful about my job because it's now public information, whatever they're doing. So as I said, you know, I think the cameras really help. And I think that if we prosecute these, these bad officers- You gotta get closer to the camera again. I said, if, if we prosecute all these bad officers, I think that, that it will have a, a ripple effect. Sure, that, sure. That, um, that, that things will start changing, but you know, it's a scary time for us all. And, and I just wish we would all get along and uh, yeah. be as peaceful as possible. I think that's why you and I take comfort in animals. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, they, they're, they're always happy to see us. They don't care um, what political side we're on. They're exactly. still the ones, right? Exactly. Yeah, so, so I, um, I agree with that. Yeah. Talk to me. Talk to me a little bit. A little bit about Animal Aid USA and you know how you kind of became involved with them in the beginning, or you started it in the yeah, beginning. Yeah. No, I. I um, Does I've I know Karen? Yeah, I was. I was at um, the Humane Society. Um, event in, in New York City. It was a fundraiser and then I actually 
was one of the speakers about animal rights during it. When I got off the stage, some woman came up to me and said, oh my gosh, you've got to meet Karen Talbot. She lives in New Jersey. She's a huge um, animal lover and she's been rescuing dogs and um, she, she needs to talk to you. Would you mind if I, gave, if I gave you her number? I'm like, no. So I actually reached out to her and she said, I'd love to come into New York to meet you. And she came the next day. She dropped off a DVD video and she said, you need to watch this. And I put it in and it was, she was the head of the PTA at, at the time for her son's school. And she created a caravan and it was a caravan from New Jersey to Georgia because Georgia was one of the worst states the way they treated their, their animals and humanely. And she did all the research on it. So she said, we're going down to Georgia with these children. We're gonna show them what it's like to save animals. She had a police escort leave, lead them out of New Jersey. Wow. Yeah. She got to Georgia, emptied out an entire shelter. And it was all on this one story of this DVD. It was a 22 minute video. And I called her, I said, how are you doing this? How are you saving these dogs? And she started doing it monthly because she got so, so involved in this. And she said, I'm taking out like more credit cards. And I said, you need help. And I love what you're doing. I said, what about salary? She says, no one gets paid. We're all volunteers. And I'm like, even better. So at that time, her core organization was called Moms, which stood for Making a Miracle Stories. I said, let's change the name to something more animal related because to me it sounded like it was a, you know, like a school organization. Um, and we changed it to Animal Aid USA and then we started getting some PR and we got a lot bigger. And as of now, since 2012, 32,000 dogs have been saved and, and that number is going up every month because we do these caravans once a month. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, and yeah, my daughter and I had a chance, had an opportunity. We flew down to Georgia and we participated. I remember. Yep. Yeah. We participated yeah. in that big rescue. You were down there. There were TV cameras down there. Georgina Bloomberg was down there. I don't know if she participates all the time as well. Yeah, she's, she, she makes a couple, uh, she tries to make a couple a year. She's still on our board and, you know, huge animal lover too. And yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad she, she's part of this and saving dogs, pigs. You know, uh, what does she have? She's had a rooster, um, <laughs> you know, a goat, some turtles. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah, big. Very, big very kind hearted people, you guys are, really. And Karen is, um, Karen amazing. runs the day to day, is uh, she's a diehard. She lives for these animals. She, she lives with many of these animals. Her husband is on board, which is amazing. You have to have, you know, participation of your family. And of yeah. course, her son, Matthew created, you know, wonderful films of what's going on. So, I mean, really how to teach your kids um, to be empathetic and caring and kind. I, I mean, they've done a great job, Matthew, really yeah, embodied. It, they're, they're really an incredible family and they haven't had a vacation in over eight years because any days they have off, you know, Dante has a full-time job that's, that's Karen's husband, but, you know, one weekend a month, he drives down to Georgia and back. It's about 16 hours each way because of, of the trucks they're driving down there and they don't have time for vacation. So imagine not, not only, you know, not getting paid, but not having any time off. And this is, they're doing this all the time. Karen works 24 seven on making sure all these dogs are saved and gets paid nothing. Right. And, you know, and sometimes she still gets attacked because there's people that, that don't like the fact that she's successful doing this. It's, it's, it's crazy. So, um, you know, I, I always say, if, I tell Karen, if anybody's attacking you for spending your own money, saving dogs, tell them to go start their own charity. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? My company is also charitable and someone had asked me, why are we giving blankets to dogs? Why aren't we helping homeless people and giving blankets to people shelters? And my response was basically like, it sounds like this is a very meaningful cause to you. And I, you know, I'd, I'd love to see what you do when you volunteer, you know, for the people shelters, please let me know, you know, check back. Yeah, no, it's, so it's, can... it's a great response. And my mom always said, Hey, you know, my, my mom's uh, charity of choice is St. Jude's. And she said, which is a great charity, obviously, you know, you know, children with cancer is the saddest thing ever. So I understand all that, but she says, you've got to pick your passion. Yes. And you, you use that passion to help. So mine, my passion's dogs. A lot, a lot of other people, you know, are, is people. Some, some could be, you know, like ducks. They love ducks. They're going to do whatever they can for ducks. Good for them. Yeah, sure. But for any, 
fucked up. So. And, yeah, and for anybody to judge anybody else when they're making a difference, at least in one area, it's, it's so wrong. Because of course, if they have a passion, then they should be using their efforts to, to help the area that they're passionate about and not criticize anybody else for, for doing what they're doing. If you remember the story about Oprah, when she gave millions of dollars to, to, uh, to schools in Africa, uh -huh. her own money, she, she, she wanted to help children in Africa. She got slaughtered here in the U.S. because they said, why didn't you give money to schools in the U.S.? Right. Like, how dare anybody say that? Like, yeah. she can do whatever she wants with her money. She's helping people. People are people. Who cares where they are? And she felt that they needed more help in Africa than they did in the U.S. And she got criticized for it. I felt it was so wrong. You, and you see it happening all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, just to, just to kind of like put a little realism to animal rescue and, um, you know, Karen does it and we, we all try and do it cautiously because we don't want to gross people out with the horror that goes on with animals, but you can drive through Georgia and roll up on a litter of puppies that have just been placed on the side of the road for yeah, no reason. Yes. You know, that's, that's, sorry. That's, that's actually when they're somewhat taken care of. I mean, we've, we've had them when, when they've been shot, they'll use them for target practice. We've had most horrific stories. And, you know, again, we believe most people are good, but there's some really bad ones out there. There's some bad and, ones. Really yeah, bad. And, they're, and they're abusing these animals. And, you know, to them, it's a game. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll use them for target practice. And, and we get these animals in, we've seen really horrific things. And, and we're just trying to make this, world a better place for animals and Karen is really wonderful what she does yeah, about she it. She is wonderful and um, she'll, she'll even drive by a house which is you know she sees a neglected dog chained up yeah, chain, yep. and she will pay them to take their dog and say please let me give your dog a better start you know a better life and yeah. you will have to pay them or you know it, it's horrible and, and clear the shelters when they go in there and they try and you know, grab all the dogs that are going to be euthanized because uh, I think Georgia euthanization is after a certain amount of time that they're in the shelter. Yeah, well, usually it's it's two weeks. Um, you know, unless a dog is is aggressive, but they 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 give about two weeks until they have to put a dog down. If you know, if they can't find the owner, usually they, if they don't, it's it's two week turnaround. Um, right. You know, and a, and a lot of these dogs are heartworm positive. A lot of them are pregnant. And we, we, we take the majority, well, we take all, all we can in because we don't like to turn down any dogs, especially the ones that really need help. Right. And they all go to, to Rick, uh, Rick Alman. Yeah, well, to, to his, his um, facility. Right. Uh, Rick Alman down in Blackshire, Georgia. So our, the dogs that we bring there are, you know, it's like their quarantine facility. They're there for about 30 days. They get their, their shots, they get spayed and neutered. They're, they have heartworm, they get treated for heartworm, and then uh, we transport them to receiving rescues along the East Coast. Right, so that's, that's their waiting area for pickup, basically, you know, for getting all of their, their health checks and, um, and pickup from when Karen goes down every 28 days or every, you know, yeah. once a month. And they go down rain or shine. So, I mean, every time I see anything that she posts, I'm just always applauding the effort. And, and she's not the only organization. You guys aren't the only organization. There's plenty of rescues that are doing the same thing. I know my company, Kona Benelli, partners also with the, the Humane Society in their special program called Humane State, where they're trying to you know, re-educate on animal welfare and they actually teach the shelters and the police, uh, the police force, law enforcement, how to recognize abusive situations when it comes to animals and what they can do, what's within their power, you know, their legal rights to do in order to save these lives of these animals. So we're part of oh, that as well. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, heartbreaking. Like, I don't know how you don't come home with so many of these dogs. I know when I have to physically go, when, when I saw you last a couple of years ago in Georgia, I mean, I wanted to take home every one of those dogs. There must have you know, been about it, two, 300 there. It's, you, 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 you don't do it because you can't do it. And you know that you, that you can't do it because it, if you start, you know, taking a couple home, you're going to have an entire house filled with dogs. And I, and I can't, I can't do that for myself now. Um, and I know that I don't have the time to take care of all, all these dogs. So just knowing that they'd be better off with, with someone who can take full responsibility for them, you know, 24 seven, yep. that's enough for me knowing that they're gonna get a good home and that we're doing the right thing. 
Right. And you do, you do what you can, of course, always to promote, you know, dog adoption. I think you were on yesterday uh, with someone trying that to get a, a bunch of dogs uh, adopted. Great organization called Furry Friends here in Jupiter, Florida. Um, they rescue everything from dogs. I just saw that they just did a snake. They have a pelican. Um, I've met a kangaroo yesterday, but, but primarily dogs and cats and a great organization. Um, and <laughs> We had nine dogs that we featured, and so far five have been adopted, and I think we'll get the other four adopted later this week or uh -huh. by, by the end of next week. So That's awesome. Really good. So that I guess is I, have, I have to run. No. Or call, as you want to call it. You can. Is there anything else that uh, you wanted to? No, I just wanted to catch up with you and just uh, let people know that, you know, you're, you're a guy that has a business that's also been affected by COVID. You have, you know, views that we should all just get along and, um, you know, and you're... Yeah, that's all. I just, I just looking for, you know, COVID's been really hard on, on everybody and it makes us probably even meaner. Yeah. Um, you know, and when it rains, it, it pours, they say, and it's been pouring for a while and I just... I'm looking for, for some sun to come out and I hope everyone can get along and I understand we all have different opinions and we're all entitled to, to it. And I, I have actually say, a quick question. Yeah. This one's a, a trick to answer. How, how do you deal with people that may say, well, you know, that's your opinion and you're looking down from the ivory tower? Because I know there are people that are certainly you know better uh, off and not well off and, you know, but, when this but happens. As, as you told me before, how do they know what it's like to be in my shoes? What, right. what, what makes an ivory tower so much better? Are you telling me that, that people that come from one spectrum are much happier? Actually, if you look at what makes people happy, they've done tests on this. I think 10% happiness comes from money. 90% comes from who you surround yourself with, who your family is. And if you look at most people who are successful, who are, who are the wealthiest people in the world, they're unhappy. So. It has nothing to do with, with your background. It has to do with who you are as a person because no one can really understand who you are unless they step in your own shoes. Right. So I don't agree with, with that statement. Um, you know, we all, we all have our problems. We, we, we've all, you know, been made fun of one way or the other. We all handle things differently. But, you know, I just say, you don't know, you don't know what it's like to be in my shoes either. Absolutely. I, I, I agree. I just had to ask the question because I know it's yeah, something no, it's that good. people might be thinking, you know, from, from your perspective. And financial is only one part of, you know, what people may be suffering. People are, are suffering in many different ways. And it's, um, it's not a good barometer to judge as, Ever. as Ever. For, you know, well, that person shouldn't need my help because they're rich or, you know, that person shouldn't get any sympathy because they have a family, you know, that can take care of them. So, there's a lot of cynicism and the way that people look at other people is um, cynical. I mean, it's unfortunate, but yeah. we have to be, we have to have an open heart. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes of anyone's life. And, you know, yeah, well, you, you, you look at a lot of rich people who are celebrities who have committed suicide, like, oh my God, they had everything going for them. Why they do that? You don't know what it's like to be that person. There's, right. it's, it's, it's not, it's not about money. It's about how, how they feel. It's about their life. It's, it's about their, their personal emotions, which people sometimes forget to understand. Just because they're a celebrity and they can sell out concerts if they're a musician, doesn't mean that they're happy. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you're a single guy. So did this make you want to be like, oh my gosh, I need to get a mate. <laughs> well, I, 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 I wouldn't want to go through this life, you know, as a single guy anymore. You know, I need, a, well, I need someone. I have Tina Turner and I do have a girlfriend, so I'm, I'm fine with that. And I've got a lot of really good friends here and a, and a good family that I talk to all the time. So, you That's know, right. I haven't been, I haven't been lonely, but I, but, you know, I feel bad for those people that, that truly are alone. I know there's a lot of them right now during COVID that have been isolated and I feel really bad for them. And it's, again, it's a tough time. And I just can't wait for this to be over and for things to get better. Yes. Yes. And that is a good lesson, you know, make your social circle bigger. Get yep, some exactly. friends, you know, talk to more people, do or get a dog. Zooms, you know, touch base with people you haven't yeah. touched base with in a while, right? Exactly. But as I said, or you can adopt a dog. Yes, adopt That's what I really a dog. recommend. Go, go adopt a dog. Absolutely. They do make the All best right. friends. All right, Jessica. Well, it was nice catching up. It's been a while. Yes. Stay, stay safe and be well. Okay. You too. All right. We'll talk later. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. Sure.